Imagine living in a city where walking home at night feels like navigating a minefield. While some urban areas are renowned for their culture and vibrant atmosphere, others are infamous for their staggering crime rates and daily struggles for safety. Today, we're diving into the 10 cities with the highest crime rates worldwide, shedding light on what makes these places so perilous. This topic isn't just for thrill-seekers or armchair travelers. It's a critical look at urban safety and societal challenges. These cities represent not just crime statistics, but also complex histories of economic hardships, political instability, and social inequality. Understanding these issues helps us grasp the global challenges of urban living. But before we unravel these urban danger zones, welcome to our channel, your ultimate guide to discovering diverse places around the world. If you enjoy in-depth analyses like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell icon so you never miss an update. Let's aim for 500 likes on this video and keep the conversation going in the comments below. San Pedro Sula, once dubbed the murder capital of the world, has long struggled with an alarming homicide rate of 51 per 100,000 people. The city's crime issues are deeply rooted in a mix of gang violence, drug trafficking, and political instability. Organized crime syndicates often dominate the streets, with rival gangs engaging in violent turf wars that leave civilians caught in the crossfire. Efforts to combat crime have seen some success, particularly through police reforms and community outreach, but these initiatives face substantial hurdles. The city remains dangerous, especially in impoverished neighborhoods where the presence of law enforcement is minimal. Corruption within the police force further complicates matters, as limited resources and inadequate training hamper crime control efforts. Many residents live in fear, with daily life frequently disrupted by violence, extortion, and kidnappings. The government has initiated various programs to improve safety, focusing on education, economic opportunities, and social cohesion. However, progress is slow and many areas remain high risk. Historical context reveals that San Pedro Sula's crime problems escalated in the late 20th century, driven by political turmoil, economic hardship, and the proliferation of drug routes. The city's location has made it a strategic point for illicit activities, further complicating the situation. Today, San Pedro Sula continues to grapple with these deeply embedded issues, despite ongoing efforts to foster a safer environment. Community leaders, non-governmental organizations, and international partners are actively working towards reducing crime through grassroots movements. But the road to recovery is fraught with challenges. The local culture and society reflect a resilient spirit, but the shadow of violence still looms large. Cape Town, while renowned for its stunning landscapes and vibrant cultural scene, is also notorious for its high crime rates. With a murder rate of 60 per 100,000 residents, it's one of the most dangerous cities in South Africa. The city's crime landscape is marked by gang violence, fueled by drug trafficking and profound social inequality, creating a cycle of poverty and crime that is difficult to break. Many neighborhoods, especially informal settlements and townships, are severely affected by this violence, where basic services are often lacking and law enforcement is overwhelmed. The police force is stretched thin, often unable to effectively combat the widespread violence and gang activity that dominates these areas. Despite these challenges, Cape Town remains a popular tourist destination, with most visitors staying in safer, well-patrolled areas. The local government is working on various initiatives to improve safety, including community policing, social programs, and economic development strategies aimed at alleviating poverty. However, the deep-rooted issues of inequality and unemployment continue to hinder substantial progress. Historical context shows that Cape Town's social and economic disparities are a legacy of apartheid, with many communities still suffering from systemic exclusion and marginalization. The contrast between the city's affluent areas, where high-end restaurants and luxury apartments abound, and its violent, crime-ridden neighborhoods 
highlights the complex social fabric of Cape Town. In recent years, the city's efforts to address crime have been met with mixed results, but community-driven initiatives provide a glimmer of hope. Despite the dangers, the people of Cape Town continue to show resilience and determination in the face of adversity. Natal, despite its scenic beauty and famous beaches, is grappling with severe crime issues that threaten both locals and tourists. The city's homicide rate stands at 75 per 100,000 residents, driven by gang violence, drug trafficking, and economic disparities. These crime dynamics are often concentrated in the city's favelas, where daily life is fraught with danger. Economic disparity and a lack of opportunities push many into criminal activities, perpetuating a cycle of violence and lawlessness. Law enforcement agencies in Natal are often underfunded and overwhelmed, struggling to keep up with the high crime rates and sophisticated criminal networks. Daily shootings, robberies, and assaults are commonplace, with many residents feeling unsafe even in their homes. The local government is working on various initiatives to reduce crime, including community outreach programs, improved policing strategies, and investments in education and job creation. However, the road to safety is fraught with challenges, and progress remains slow. Tourism, a vital part of Natal's economy, is significantly affected, with visitors warned to stay within secure areas and avoid high-risk neighborhoods. The stark contrast between the city's beautiful beaches and its violent neighborhoods paints a vivid picture of urban inequality and the broader struggles Brazil faces in addressing these challenges. Despite the difficulties, Natal remains hopeful for a safer future through continuous efforts and community resilience, with many local organizations actively working to bridge the gap between law enforcement and communities. There is a sense of optimism among some residents who see potential in new policies and community solidarity to drive meaningful change. Fortaleza, another city in Brazil known for its beautiful coastline, hides a much darker reality beneath its picturesque exterior. The city has a homicide rate of 83 per 100,000 inhabitants, one of the highest in Brazil, largely driven by the activities of drug cartels and gang wars. Fortaleza's law enforcement faces immense challenges due to corruption, inadequate training, and insufficient resources, making it difficult to maintain order in high-crime areas. Poverty and lack of education further exacerbate the situation, leaving many young people vulnerable to criminal influences and gang recruitment. Over the past decade, efforts to combat crime have been met with mixed results, with some successes in reducing specific types of crime, but overall crime rates remain alarmingly high. The city's favelas are particularly dangerous, with police often reluctant to patrol these areas due to the high risks involved. Despite these issues, Fortaleza continues to attract tourists, who are generally advised to stay in well-guarded, tourist-friendly zones. The juxtaposition of tourist hotspots like the Praia do Futuro and high-crime neighborhoods underscores the complex social fabric of this Brazilian city. In recent years, there have been renewed efforts by local authorities and community leaders to address these challenges, but the pervasive influence of organized crime remains a significant obstacle. Community-based initiatives and international partnerships are helping to drive some progress, though the path to a safer Fortaleza is still long and arduous. Detroit, often romanticized as the heart of the American automobile industry, is also known for its staggering crime rates. In 2023, the city reported over 2,000 violent crimes per 100,000 residents, a figure that is alarmingly high compared to the national average. Experts attribute this to a combination of economic decline, high unemployment, and social disintegration that has plagued the city for decades. 
the local police department struggles with understaffing and limited resources, further complicating efforts to curb crime. Despite ongoing revitalization projects that aim to rejuvenate downtown Detroit and other key areas, many neighborhoods remain plagued by gang violence, drug trafficking, and a lack of economic opportunities. Historical context reveals that Detroit's troubles began with the collapse of the auto industry, leading to massive job losses and a subsequent decline in the quality of life for many residents. Over the years, this economic downturn has translated into higher crime rates, particularly in areas like the East Side and parts of the West Side. Property crime is also rampant, with frequent reports of car theft, burglary, and vandalism. Nevertheless, community organizations, local government, and private investors are working tirelessly to restore safety and hope to the city. Urban gardening initiatives, community policing programs, and youth engagement activities are all part of a broader strategy to reclaim Detroit's reputation as a safe and prosperous city. There is a strong sense of community resilience among Detroit's residents, who continue to fight for a brighter future despite the challenges. St. Louis consistently ranks among the most dangerous cities in the United States, with a violent crime rate of 1,800 per 100,000 people in 2023. The city's crime wave is driven by a combination of socioeconomic issues, such as poverty, unemployment, and inadequate education, which create a fertile ground for criminal activities. Gang activity and drug-related crimes are particularly prevalent in the northern neighborhoods, where opportunities are scarce, and residents often feel trapped in cycles of violence. The local government and police force are implementing various strategies to curb the violence, including community policing, social programs, and economic development initiatives aimed at addressing the root causes of crime. However, progress is slow, and many residents continue to feel unsafe. Historical analysis shows that St. Louis's crime problems escalated in the late 20th century as manufacturing jobs disappeared and economic disparities widened. Today, efforts to revitalize the city center contrast sharply with neglected, high-crime areas where poverty and violence persist. The dichotomy within the city underscores the broader challenges of urban renewal amidst persistent social issues. Despite these difficulties, there is a sense of determination among community leaders and residents to turn things around. Local nonprofits, neighborhood associations, and business owners are all working together to create a safer environment, fostering a sense of hope amidst the ongoing struggles. Durban, a major port city on South Africa's east coast, struggles with severe crime rates that have become a daily reality for many residents. With over 1,300 violent crimes per 100,000 residents, it stands as one of the country's most dangerous cities. The crime landscape is marked by high rates of murder, assault, and armed robbery, often concentrated in informal settlements and townships where basic services are scarce. Social inequality, unemployment, and a history of apartheid contribute to the ongoing violence creating deep-seated mistrust between communities and law enforcement. The police force, though dedicated, is often outmatched by the scale of the problem, leading to a lack of effective crime prevention and control. Efforts to improve security have seen some success, particularly through community policing and targeted social interventions, but challenges remain substantial. The legacy of apartheid has left deep scars contributing to distrust and ongoing social tensions that make crime reduction difficult. Residents are advised to be vigilant, particularly after dark and in isolated areas where the risk of robbery and assault is higher. Despite these dangers, Durban remains a vibrant cultural hub known for its lively markets, beautiful beaches, and resilient spirit. The local government, along with community organizations, is working hard to address these issues through comprehensive development programs aimed at reducing poverty and inequality. There is hope that, with sustained effort and community cooperation, 
Durban can overcome its reputation as a crime hotspot. Acapulco, once a glamorous resort city attracting celebrities and tourists from around the world, now struggles with extreme violence and crime. The city currently has a homicide rate of 110 per 100,000 residents, primarily due to ongoing drug cartel conflicts and organized crime. The city's economy has suffered greatly as a result, with tourism significantly declining over the past decade. Law enforcement is often outgunned and outnumbered by powerful criminal organizations, making effective policing extremely difficult. Residents live in constant fear, with many areas effectively controlled by gangs and daily life marked by violence and uncertainty. The government has deployed military forces in an attempt to curb the violence, but success has been limited due to the complexity and scale of the problem. Historical context shows that Acapulco's decline began with the rise of drug trafficking in the 1990s, which brought violence, corruption, and social decay. Efforts to restore the city's safety are ongoing, but the challenges remain immense. Despite the dangers, Acapulco remains hopeful for a better future, with community efforts aimed at reclaiming their city from the grip of violence. Local businesses, residents, and social organizations continue to push for reforms and support alternative economic opportunities that do not rely on tourism. There is a renewed sense of optimism among some, driven by small but meaningful successes in community engagement and crime prevention. Caracas, the capital of Venezuela, is plagued by extreme crime rates, with one of the highest murder rates in the world at 111 per 100,000 residents. The city's crime issues are exacerbated by political instability, economic collapse, and widespread poverty, which have left many residents in a state of desperation. Law enforcement is overwhelmed and underfunded, often unable to effectively combat the rampant violence that pervades the city. Kidnappings, robberies, and murders are daily occurrences, with many areas deemed too dangerous to visit, even for locals. The government's efforts to improve safety have been largely ineffective, hindered by corruption, limited resources, and lack of political will. Historical analysis reveals that Caracas's crime problems escalated with the country's economic decline in the early 21st century, which led to social breakdowns and the proliferation of criminal networks. Today, the city remains one of the most dangerous places to live, with residents enduring significant hardships as they navigate daily life amidst insecurity and uncertainty. Despite these challenges, community organizations and local activists continue to work towards creating a safer environment for future generations. Initiatives focused on education, youth engagement, and community resilience are providing some hope, but the path forward remains fraught with obstacles. The resilience of Caracas's residents is a testament to their determination to reclaim their city from chaos. Tijuana tops the list with a staggering homicide rate of 138 per 100,000 residents, making it the city with the highest crime rate on our list. The city's crime issues are driven by drug cartel conflicts, human trafficking, and economic disparity, which have created a volatile environment for residents and visitors alike. Law enforcement is often outmatched by powerful criminal organizations, making crime control a daunting task that requires more than just police presence. Many neighborhoods are effectively ruled by gangs, with violence and fear dominating daily life, making everyday activities dangerous for ordinary citizens. The government has deployed military forces in an attempt to restore order, but success has been limited due to the pervasive nature of organized crime. Historical context reveals that Tijuana's crime problems escalated with the rise of drug trafficking in the 1980s, turning it into a strategic point for cartel operations. The city's proximity to the U.S. border further complicates the situation, as it serves as a key transit point for illicit drugs and human trafficking. 
Today, Tijuana continues to grapple with these issues despite ongoing efforts to improve safety, including community policing, social programs, and international cooperation. The contrast between Tijuana's bustling border economy and its violent neighborhoods underscores the complex social challenges the city faces. Despite these difficulties, there is hope for a safer future through continuous efforts, community resilience, and policy reforms aimed at reducing inequality and providing alternatives to crime. From San Pedro Sula to Tijuana, these cities highlight the severe impact of crime on communities worldwide. Understanding the root causes and ongoing efforts to combat these issues is crucial for creating safer urban environments. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell icon so you never miss an update. Let's aim for 500 likes on this video. And if you're interested in learning about cities that have successfully reduced their crime rates, and if you're curious about top 10 easiest countries for Americans to move to in 2024, check out the video on screen now. See you next time!